In this video, um, I'm going to take a look at um, definite integrals. Uh, we're going to do some theorems. Uh, we're going to you know, do some comparison between an indefinite and a definite integral, and then I'll work out some example problems with different ideas of this idea of what an, a definite integral is. It would definitely be a video that you would watch uh, very, very early on at the beginning when you first started learning about definite integrals. All right. Um, so for starters here, let's go back and kind of look at an indefinite integral. All right. An indefinite integral um, does not have any numbers on either side of this. All right. So indefinite integral, um, you can refer to it as a family of functions. All right. So this integral right here, at this point, hopefully you've been introduced to power rule. All right. So if I integrate this, I'm going to add one and get a 2 here, and then divide by there, I'm going to get my x squared, okay? So, um, x squared, and then we put the plus c on here, okay? Now, I do want to go a little bit about this. This, this represents a family of functions, all right? Because I don't know exactly which parabola that this integral was, okay? So, in other words, um, maybe say it's this parabola right here, okay, that's been shifted up 3. The original equation here would be x squared plus 3, all right, well, if I took x squared plus 3 and took the derivative of it, I would get a 2x, and then the 3 would go away, so I would just get 2x, okay? So it could be that parabola right there. Or if I took a parabola and just shifted it up 1, that would be x squared plus 1, all right? So if I took the derivative of that, I would get 2x because the 1 goes away, okay? So this definite integral... All right, could be any one of these parabolas. All right, family, and so it's a family of functions because I don't know exactly which one it is. All right, whereas the definite integral is going to be a number. Okay, we're going to right here at the very beginning look at it as like the area of a region, the area under the curve. That's usually the first introduction of it. Um, something that I always like to tell my students is I like to think of the integral, all right, being an accumulator, all right, not a, an official math definition or anything, but the integral itself accumulates things, okay? So in this case, what we're going to be looking at here to begin with is it's going to accumulate the area under that curve, all right? So, and then that would give, be giving us a number or an answer to represent that. Okay, so later on, when you start doing like AP problems and they're story problem based, you can think of it, you know, if it asks what's the total or something along those lines, be thinking, oh, well, my integral accumulates things, so it would accumulate a total. Okay, so that will probably be helpful later on. All right, um, next, just a couple definitions that I want to read and go through. Um, um, we've got a theorem here that says continuity implies integral integrability, all right? Um, so if you've got a function and it's continuous on a closed interval from A to B, then F is integrable on that interval, all right? In other words, on that, <clears throat> excuse me, on that interval from A to B of F of X, if I integrate from A to B of F of X dx, I'm guaranteed that that's going to exist, all right? As long as my function is continuous on that closed interval, all right, then I can integrate it. Okay. Another theorem here is the definite integral as an area of a region. All right, that's what we're going to be taking a look at first here. If f is continuous and non-negative on the closed interval from a to b, then the area of the region bounded by the graph of f and the x-axis and the vertical lines x equals a and x equals b is going to be given by the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Okay, so I'm going to have I'm going to have an interval from A to B. I'm going to have two vertical lines there, and I'm going to use the x-axis and my curve, and that's going to be my definite integral as the area under that region. Okay, so just a couple of theorems that are usually introduced very very early. Okay, all right. Now um, in the actual examples that I'm going to work through, um, we're not necessarily going to use any of these. Uh, special definite integrals here, but it's something that should probably be introduced to you really early, and then as you need them, then hopefully you're going to remember them and things are going to fall into place here. Um, this first one, if I integrate from a to a of f of x dx, all right, hopefully you're thinking, okay, I've got a vertical line at x equals a, I've got another vertical line at x equals a, 
Okay, so then the area would be zero because there would be nothing. My interval would not be very, very wide over there. Um, you are assuming here that f is defined at x equals a, of course, all right, but you just wouldn't have any area there. Um, hopefully this also kind of makes sense to you. If I integrate from b to a of f of x dx, okay, I could switch those limits of integration and then it would just be the negative of that. So then those two things should be equal. Um, and then here this one kind of should make sense too. If I've got some interval a to b and c is inside that interval somewhere, um, I could divvy that up. I could, you know, split it up. So the integral from a to b of f of x dx is going to be equal to the integral from a to c of f of x, so somewhere from a to somewhere in the middle, plus the integral from c to b, so the second part of that integral. So that one should kind of make sense to you as well. And I'm pretty sure that, at least in my classes, we've already kind of introduced this idea on the um, indefinite integral. It also works for a definite integral. If I'm integrating from a to b and I'm multiplying some constant by my function, so f k times f of x dx, I can pull that constant out in front of my integral and go ahead and integrate like normal. Okay, so we had done this on an indefinite integral, works the same on a definite integral as well.